What's up, Hoopers? Okay, this Pat Bev thing, this Russell Westbrook, this Laker thing is just going to happen. There's so many trade talks going out there, but the more you read into it, nobody's buying into that stuff. Genie doesn't want to give up the two picks. They want to be prepared next season. Pat Bev and Russell Westbrook, they're seen smiling and hugging and high-fiving. And LeBron James invited Russell Westbrook to the mini camp. There's three things that the Lakers absolutely must do if they want to be title contenders or at least not be the laughing stock of the NBA again. We're going to be bringing up shot charts. We're going to be bringing up uh, past statistics and data. We're going to be bringing up plays from the Milwaukee Bucks, which ran a four out one in just like Darvin Ham says he's doing. We will dis dissect the Lakers and how they can be title contenders because they keep in Westbrook, y'all. I am your NBA white guy. I talk all things NBA hoops from a hooper's perspective. And if you like that type of content, then make sure you tap that subscribe button and you click the bell so you're notified every time I do a new video. Whether we like it, Lakers fans or not, Westbrook's here to stay. Now, a lot of these trades, they're usually done in July. It's already September. We're just a couple weeks away from training camp, and that's where you got to start gelling, meshing, and getting ready for the season. So I'm probably going to shoot this video, and then there's going to be a huge release from Woj that says Westbrook's been traded, but I highly doubt it. I'm starting to think they're just rolling with what they got. Darvin Ham, that's all he's done is talk about how excited he is to coach Russ. Pat Bev, you've seen him. He's hugging. They're smiling. They're practicing. Westbrook showed up to Pat Bev's press conference. I've been in their shoes before. I remember playing the Crosstown rival, or we had a huge rival in college, and we never beat them on their home floor. And then come summertime when we had an all-star camp, I actually played with some of these dudes. We couldn't be tighter. It's weird. You want to kill them. You want to rip their head off when you're playing against them. And when you get on the same team, you can't wait to ball out together. So I can see how it works from a Hooper's perspective. But the X's and O's and the hustle, that's all got to be determined. So here are the three things that the Lakers have to do to be uh, title contenders. You're going to vote at the end of this. Which one is the most important? I think it's going to be the last one. So I wanted to bring up some film and show some things. I wanted to bring up some shot charts and also discuss where these Lakers could be positioned to make this successful. But to start off, we're going to discuss number one. It's going to be a lot more movement in off the ball screens and cuts. I want to bring up a little bit of footage. And obviously, Darvin Ham comes from the, uh, assisting the Milwaukee Bucks. They ran this exact same system. But before I do that, let's clarify one very important thing about the four out one in. The four out one in has been discussed in all of my comments and in a lot of videos as basically we need to have, you know, Anthony Davis or Bryant or one of our big men down low, right? That's not typically how they run these things. In fact, what they're trying to do is the exact opposite. They're usually bringing one of their small guys as being the in and having him down low. What this does is it draws all the defenders out and it cleans up the, the lane, right? When you have an Anthony Davis who can get to the basket, when you have obviously LeBron James, who's the greatest downhill basketball player the planet's ever seen, and the one thing he didn't have last year was space. If you go back and watch a lot of the footage from the bubble with the Lakers, they had that space because they had shooters and they had people moving. And Caruso was always moving. He was always setting screens. This is what the Lakers desperately need. So this is going to allow a Russell Westbrook or an Austin Reeves or a Kendrick Nunn or a Pat Bev to be actually moving and setting off ball screens, going back door and hitting cuts. Now we're going to again bring up shot charts and show percentages so that it can support this. But first, let's go to the film. All right, so here's a play that the actual Milwaukee Bucks run. You can see that they're coming down on a fast break and look who's going to be bringing the ball. Have you noticed lately that Giannis is always running that offense because it's drawing out usually one of the best defenders, right? And this also allows him, if the spacing's correctly, to work with an entire court, get downhill, get into these lanes. And what does it do? It collapses three or four defense. We've seen this with LeBron so many times. How many times has he gone to the rack and there's been five other jerseys around him? That's where he can kick off to the shooters. Last season, they stayed home too much. They weren't moving, and all of the defenders could stay on their men, and it just forced up these late-second shots. So we're going to watch this real quick, and then we'll explain exactly what the Lakers can do. So here's uh, Giannis, okay? He was able to draw a lot of the attention, and if we do this again in slow-mo, 
Okay, so I wanted to play this again so that you guys can see. So the one in right now, what they're actually doing is two screens on either side. This is again, when, when I've talked about this in every video, when you have movement, your defenders have got to, to honor that, right? They have to watch you. And if you're a basketball player, you understand too, what do you always do? You point at the ball, point at your player, nothing behind you. So this is something that the defense always has to keep on. And when you have those initial screens, what it does is it, it focuses their attention on that. So it leaves backdoor cuts wide open. But DiVincenzo, because I'm sure the Spurs watch film, hey, they're going to set screens here. The communication that happens just with their eyeballs, they know it. This is the stuff I remember playing college, high school ball, you name it. Me and my point guard, me and my center, we had that look, right? And he knew if I did that, I was going back door. It was alley-oop dunk all game. DiVincenzo comes up. He's going to set a weak screen, barely his screen, but he knows they're going to try and switch this, and he's just going to cut back door. So... He comes, screens. He doesn't even hit him. He doesn't even screen. Okay. West, Westbrook last year set like 50 screens in 70-something games. So he was never screening anywhere but just standing around. But this is how the most athletic point guard, Russell Westbrook, can now get wide open lanes is don't bring the ball up. Get your butt down the court. Come up, set off the ball screens, cut back door, easy layup. All right, so now I talked about four out, one in. This is something that you could run with any one of the, the Lakers players. But if you're going to run uh, Westbrook and you're going to run Pat Bev at the same time, I'll show the shot chart next. You'll actually see that Pat Bev shoots incredible from the corner, like 45 to 55%. And guess who else does? Your boy, Anthony Davis. So we're going to show exactly what happens. This is you know a LeBron bringing the ball down. You could even run this with AD. And you're going to come bring him up a screen. That's your one in coming up. And again, what's the, the whole goal of this is to have open lanes. So when you have shooters out there, which you have to respect, your defenders can't cheat in as much. So if we, we play this, um, you're going to see right here that Giannis has all the space in the world to drive in. They collapse. Look at these shooters. You've got shooters everywhere. We're also going to talk about your boy Kendrick Nunn and how good he shoots from the top of the key. So now you got the corners and you got the top of the key with LeBron and Kendrick Nunn who can knock those down. This can really open up some shots. He kicks it out. You got your ugly boy Lopez with the buckets. So yes, you can have your big men out there. Thomas Bryant, these guys, they can shoot it a little bit, but Anthony Davis is deadly from the corner. Pat Bev is deadly from the corner. Kendrick Nunn, these guys are deadly from the corner. Real quick, let's look at that shot chart. Okay, so the first player I wanted to discuss, I put up Kendrick Nunn. I have, how many times have I talked about him in this uh, channel? And you guys down below, who's your sleeper for the Lakers? Mine, Kendrick Nunn, and my, my other NBA white boy, AR, Austin Reeves. Kendrick Nunn, though, he's a guy that um, I remember talk, you know, watching him. He ascended. He can get to the basket and finish very, very well. And the shot chart don't lie. I mean, it's all in here. It's a lot of floaters and finishes, okay? So he can run a, a four-out one in. He can cut back door, finish here. But he can get to the basket, too. But what I thought was really cool is you look at the corner threes, and they're not too impressive, 30 32%. But when you look at the dead straightaway shot, and I remember watching him hit like six of these versus the Lakers, 40 plus percent. He's shooting hundreds of threes. In fact, if you look, he shot 391 of them. So this is a guy who you have to, you have to keep a good defender on him. You have to get a hand in his face. It's going to open up lanes. Now here's Patrick Beverly. Obviously, he's not a guy who's shooting straight away very good or at all, right? So if the Lakers are going to run this four out one in, you got to get to your spots, right? Well, where is his spots? He loves the corners. If you look over here, he's shooting 43.5%. Kick it over to the other side, his favorite, 55%, okay? We just need this dude knocking down two, three, four, three pointers, whatever, if he can, even just two of them, but playing defense, right? Getting back on defense, but Knowing that he can shoot over 50% from the corner, that opens up a huge uh, part of the game. But the, the other respectful thing, he's shooting over 43% from this corner because when you go over to your boy, here's Anthony Davis, right? Now, he did shoot uh, quite a bit from straightaway too, which is good because um, you can run pick and roll with him, right? So he can come up and set the screen for LeBron. LeBron can drive in like he does and, and hang up in the air for about five seconds and then pass it. Well, he can kick it straight back out to a nun or to an Anthony Davis who can hit the straightaway shot. But this is also somewhere where you can put AD. He doesn't shoot from this corner, doesn't like it. But over here, 53.6%. Over here, uh, it was 43, what, 45% for Pat Bev. So now you have two shooters 
who average over 40 plus percent, sometimes in the 50 percentile from the corners, right? There's your shooting, right? I, I, and again, I'm not like saying this is an absolute championship contender, but if they get to their spots and they work hard and they focus on the next two things I'm going to talk about, this can work. So the number two most important thing before I get to it, guys, you got to help me out. You got to hit that like button. Look, you guys have been killing me in the comments because I do these breaking news titles. Well, it's the only videos that get put out there. If I do normal hooping videos, they don't go anywhere and you guys don't click. So if you want to help me out right now, hit that like button and you got to comment down below either one, two or three. What is the most important? Number two, playing defense, which leads to offense. They were atrocious last year. Frank Vogel gets all this blame, yet in 2020, they were one of the top, if not the top defensive team. So they bought in, but they had incredible hustle players like Caruso, and I loved JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard. They played a great role down low blocking shots, and AD was absolutely terrifying under the block. Blocking shots, I remember when Dame Lillard in the bubble tried jumping up and dunking on AD, and he blocked that like he's not afraid of, you know, going up and blocking shots. So... This is something that's going to lead to a ton of fast breaks. And when the Lakers are running, they're one of the fastest teams. I don't care how old LeBron gets. The dude can run, and he is a train locomotive. And guess who else can? Russell Westbrook. So stop just walking down the court trying to figure out who's going to dribble the ball and setting up your offense. Get down the court and score. So this is something that Caruso did very well. I played on a team where this kid, he literally averaged like 0.7 points a game. And people would be like, why is that dude playing? He was the most creative defender I've ever seen. He would pickpocket guys. He would get like three to four steals a game. It was incredible. That led us to fast breaks. That's momentum changing stuff. So you got to have a guy like that. I think Pat Bev obviously is going to, you know, work on that. But a guy like Wessel, Russell Westbrook, he's got a motor. So he can get his hands on balls. He can be annoying. I think he's actually going to absorb some of the stuff that Pat Bev does. And he's going to lead that fast break because if any kind of player can get a hand on the ball, there's a loose ball. And if they actually show effort, which is what I liked out of Stanley Johnson last year because nobody played hard and then he would. He was diving on the floor, getting loose balls. That's the stuff we need. And then LeBron, he can throw that thing full court. Look at this. Oh, left-handed. Guess who else runs the, the court really, really well? Anthony Davis. Do you know how many times that LeBron would just kick that thing the full 94 feet right under the hoop to, to AD for the dunk? Or on the fast breaks, AD was always cutting right down the middle. If you look at that bubble run from AD, it was the most impressive thing. He ran down the court, was usually the first guy down the court every single time. So you've got to play defense, get those small things, and that's what they had no ability to do last year. And if Pat Bev gets into these guys, Okay, if he can get these guys to buy in, Darvin Ham, we already know that he can do it. We already know he played tough defense in, in uh, Detroit. His best friend is Rasheed Wallace. Like, he's a tough dude. And I really hope that the Lakers buy into this. But the third thing, the most important thing that the Lakers absolutely must do is not with the Lakers. It's with LeBron James. If LeBron okays this whole thing and says, you know what, Westbrook, I got your back, I'm the one who brought you here anyways. It will change everything. Last season, he had his head down. He moped. He's pointing fingers. It was over. The leader of the entire organization is LeBron James. Not Darvin Ham, not Palinka, not Jeannie Buss. It's LeBron. And if his energy is down, the whole team is down. Now, he had some of those moments in 2020 when they won, and Rondo wasn't having it. He would gather that whole team around. He would get everybody fired up. JaVale McGee wasn't having it. They were going lit on the bench. You had a lot of guys holding LeBron accountable, right? Last year, there just wasn't any of that. AD, he's a great player, but he's not going to really get into LeBron's butt, and I hope that he does this season. If LeBron okays this and he shows energy on that defensive end, obviously Pat Bev is going to do the same, and I think Pat Bev can play that role of a Rondo, which will get him actually motivated to go out there and play hard. They can win some games, and all they got to do is get to the postseason. Because healthy postseason, postseason AD and LeBron is absolutely terrifying. And if they get the chemistry going, they get cooking, they run the fast breaks, get downhill, they can win some games. They already were smashing the Phoenix Suns that year. They were toying with them, playing with them, doing the shimmy up and under LeBron. And then AD goes down. They end up losing the series. The Suns went to the finals that year. So they were a championship team that year. They just didn't get the health right. This is the year if they make these things happen, which it looks like 
it could work out. You comment down below. What do you think is the most important? Is it Darvin Ham's offense? Is it the defense? Or is it LeBron buying in? You rate it down below and comment. What did I miss? What is some other important factors? And should we just hold on till next season to do all the trading and bringing in free agents, right? I am your NBA white guy. I talk all things NBA hoops from a hooper's perspective. And if you're loving this content, please hit the like button and tap that subscribe button. All right, hoopers, until my next video, we'll catch you later.